I'm an urbanist, but if I were a politician showing this picture, I would say more than 50% of the world's population now lives in cities. Uh, yes. But this picture says that they are not only living in cities. Like the Ganges in Northwestern Europe and Java, they are urbanized rural landscapes in which a lot of these people live. They are productive landscape, as you can see here in the uh, diagram of rice production. So we have to do here with a urbanization phenomenon, which is major in the world, um, is a productive landscape, um, and contains maybe half of the urbanized population. So um, if that is true, uh, like you see for instance here, it's not only in Asia, it's also in the Netherlands, where in the Westland we have a productive landscape of greenhouses, 24 hours a day with light, producing uh, the tomatoes for whole of Europe, um, but still being a, a local agriculture that is tied to the soil and needs a kind of exchange with the villages and towns that are there. Um, if we accept that this is the case, then we have a completely different uh, idea of many politicians who, uh, and also scientists who say we have to look at that people uh, start to work, live in concentrated cities and leave the countryside alone. There are uh, swarms of hybrid microeconomic activities that are starting to invade this landscape. This is, for instance, a retired Pan Am stewardess, Catherine, who raises uh, alpacas from South America in Switzerland uh, for felt-making courses to old hippies who look in the weekend at uh, Bollywood festivals. <laughs> and so um, it, we have to take it very serious. This is the Flevopolder in Amsterdam. Uh, near Amsterdam, where there was a hydrological problem that uh, resulted in a wetlands. This wetlands became the most original prehistoric landscape, 20 years old, in the Netherlands. And they started to uh, breed tarpan horses, rebreed tarpan horses, who are extinct, extinct, to export them again to Eastern Europe. These are ver very outrageous examples of this cultural landscape of dense um, urban um, uh, activity. Um, in uh, Europe, but also uh, in Asia. So if we accept that, then we have to develop strategies. And one strategy is to start urban um, development with um, the agriculture, with the forest, with the wetlands, instead, as, uh, instead of uh, with the uh, construction. So you can see here, this is our first experiment in which we first um, made the layout for the agriculture, for the forests, and for the wetlands where uh, buildings can gradually invade uh, incrementally as patchworks of development, creating this um, urban landscape where you have a combination of leisure, housing, working, um, all kinds of amenities, and a very strong relationship uh, with the soil, with the productive soil, um, and with the landscape. It's a very interesting way uh, to look at it, and it also looks that uh, in this way you can work on it in a certain promising way. Um, because these um, landscapes, they, uh, they cannot be designed as such. They have to be steered. And so um, we, we make the um, railway station area, high-speed railway station area of Montpellier, between the city of Montpellier um, and the Mediterranean Sea, which the Paris authorities have top-down decided and so you end up with a high-speed railway station in the middle of the landscape, which automatically will generate an urbanization pressure. So how to canalize this urbanization pressure is to first safeguard the infrastructure lines um, and the landscape qualities, and then allow certain volumes of build form invade um, this landscape and, uh, in, in a way that you always have a, a balance between development um, and, be and between the um, landscape qualities. You encourage people to use this uh, soil and you um, also design specific devices, like for instance, building the uh, railway development around the infrastructure bundle as a noise and pollution barrier and create a station that is really symbolizing um, this park-like um, atmosphere because it's very important. These landscapes are very mobility independent and therefore 
the design and the canalization of these mobility systems in these uh, future landscapes are extremely important. And this is also uh, my question. Uh, my question is, um, of course, we are having a fact that these landscapes exist. Um, we also have uh, the fact that we are intervening in these landscapes. But the question is, um, given this fact, do you think that this is a viable model for a future ur urbanization condition um, that can turn into a sustainable condition? 